Welcome back to Daytime, everyone. We are joined again by Jean Clements, president of the Hillsborough Classroom Teachers Association, James Gibbs, a middle school teacher, Amanda Newman, an elementary teacher, and Christy Gold, a high school teacher. We're talking about the hot topics affecting teachers. We've, we've recovered the budget cuts. Yes, depressing. We're not going to solve all those problems today, but let's talk about what parents can do to make their children thrive in school. Open the backpack every day. <laughs> look for the assignments, look for the notes from your teacher. Are you finding that sometimes there's a huge disconnect between parents and their students? There is. I teach at the middle school level and predominantly parents are letting their kids go saying, you know, you're middle school, you're old enough now to do what you need to do. And that's a big problem because you give them that amount of freedom, you might not ever know what that student was doing in class for that day. So rather than just ask them, what'd you learn in school? And they give the perfunctory, uh, uh answer. Yeah, <coughs> nothing. <laughs> Please get into get into the backpack or go online. I know a lot of a lot of schools do online as far as their assignments, their testing, okay. their their grades. Get on that computer and find out what they were doing, and then engage in conversation. Get that student to explain to you what happened in class, and it takes it to a whole other level of thinking. You're an elementary school teacher. Do you find that when the kids are in elementary school, the parents are pretty involved? Um, I think it depends. Um, I've noticed a difference. As I have taught through the last 10 years, I have a lot more working parents that are not just working one jobs, but often two. And so time becomes a factor and parents are sometimes struggling with, how do I support my child's education when I'm working until eight o'clock at night? They may only get home and have a half hour of time with their child before it's bedtime and um, the whole day starts over again. So one thing I tell my parents is please take the time. If you only have 15 minutes, read with your child because if they can read together, and even when their kids are independent readers, sometimes we kind of think it's okay for them to go off and read on their own, but take that time to read together, ask questions, because if you can strengthen their reading, it's gonna help them for the rest of their schooling across the board. And also have those conversations, because it's going to build a connection that you might miss because you're working so much. Right. So having those conversations about school. Are you seeing a difference in kids these days? Do they seem more stressed to you than, say, 10 years ago? Or, or are you seeing different new issues coming up with children? I think that students feel like much greater stress than they used to at the high school level because it's so competitive to get into even state colleges much more than it was when we graduated high school. So you have students who are really overloading their schedules with a lot of advanced placement classes. They want to be the all-star athletes. They're involved in every service organization so that they can build a resume that will make them competitive for that college application process. So it's really important that we we allow them to have some kind of balance in their lives, obviously, so they don't get overwhelmed. And exactly. One thing, yeah, they don't excel at one thing and then everything else slides. Right. Okay, all right. <laughs> Lindsay? All right, I'm here with Michael from Martinez Middle School. You have a question? Uh, yes, I've been teaching for 11 years now. Um, one of the things I've always noticed that makes my students successful is when their parents do get involved. Um, with these budget cuts that we're experiencing, I'm still gonna do my best to save money maybe not go out to eat three times a week, maybe just once a week. Um, one of the things I was wondering, maybe you could advise to parents, how can they help teachers or maybe how can teachers ask for financial assistance without like, maybe being inappropriate with it or? Mm, good, good question. question. <laughs> I think PTA can be very helpful in that regard, uh, but I think teachers can also send letters home. You know, we have some kids who uh, aren't able, their families aren't able to provide the kinds of supplies and materials they need if anybody has the ability to buy extra. I think it's also helpful for, for community organizations and businesses to go to the district to find out which schools need the most help. Which schools because could it's use... it's not always your school. It's not always your neighborhood school. So whether people are going to their neighborhood school or to the district to help them find what materials are needed at which school, it, it's going to all help out, but businesses, community organizations, clubs, and people who live in the neighborhood could really step in and ask what it is schools need right now. But I think it, teachers absolutely can send those letters home to all parents but, and, and absolutely work with your PTA. Thank you, Michael. Thank well, you. obviously, we could talk about this for hours because there's so yes. many topics to cover. <clears throat> Just one word, the biggest pet peeve of, of yours as a teacher? Texting. Texting? <laughs> Tardies. Tardies, people Tardies. who are late, yes. okay? Sticking their gum underneath the desk. Oh, that's still a problem. <laughs> and finally, uh, I think people, kids not coming to school, just yeah. a high absentee rate, inconsistent attendance makes it really difficult. All right, well, we want to thank our teachers in the audience for being so open and candid, and of course, for you coming in today. And today, every teacher in our audience will be taking home some goodies, including from Scholastic, the a global children's publishing and education company, a copy of the new book, Best 
Books for Boys by literacy expert Pam Aylin, which is full of tips and resources to help teachers and parents get boys reading. And a tote bag with the message read every day, Lead a Better Life. And that's the name of us. I'm going to just give you these. I'm not going to try to find all this. That's the name of the Scholastics Global Literacy Campaign. You can find out more about it and get tips on how you can help kids read at daytimeonline.tv. Hey, just ahead, Sam takes a look at the new comedy, 30 Minutes or Less. We'll be right back with more daytime. Thank you very much, and good luck this year. Thanks.